welcome uh, here in the Netherlands and um, here with us mm -hmm. to talk about your new book. Uh, the first thing I wanted to ask is you uh, talk about uh, Afra and Nuri experience uh, fleeing from a country which has become terribly unsafe, uh, which is su such a you know it's a terrible experience. How can you write about something like that? You can't just make it up. Right, so it, I think it came from a few places. Um, so one of the reasons that I chose to work with refugees in the first place was because my parents were refugees themselves during the war in Cyprus in 1974. When I went to visit my dad in Cyprus, you know, because he lives on the far east side of Cyprus that faces Syria, and I just had this feeling like I was there and I was safe, and all these people were experiencing this horrific, devastating war. And, you know, I just wanted to do something to help. So when I went back, I decided, well, I've got this long summer. So I thought, well, maybe I can use some of this time to go and help people in Athens. It's just these things that I saw and experienced, and I absorbed them. And the characters in the story, they're fictional, but they've been inspired by, by the feelings I felt of what I saw and the, ex the feelings that other people had that I picked up on and mm. I could, you know, um, and I just, I couldn't, I had to write it. The, the beekeeper story, yeah. mm. this is something which is introduced at the beginning and you think, hmm, what's this bumblebee doing here? Yeah. And mm. it's such a beautiful image. Can you s tell us something about why you used that? One morning I woke up, this was some time after, and I thought, ah, oh, Nuri's going to be a beekeeper. But I don't know where it came from. I, honestly, I don't know where I got that from. I just thought, that's it, he's going to be a beekeeper. Then I started the research, and I came across um, an article by someone called Dr. Riald Alsous, and he was a professor of agriculture at Damascus University. And we spoke the next day on the phone, and he was such a lovely man, he invited me to have dinner with his family and to meet the bees. And now this man, he set up a project called The Buzz Project where he teaches refugees and job seekers how to keep bees. Mm. Now he came with his family, he went to the UK with his family as refugees. He managed to settle and then to set up a project where he's helping other people. And I thought that was extraordinary. Mm. So I, um, I went to visit him, I met the bees, um, and he taught me so much. It was such a wonderful experience that I then, the character of Nuri and Mustafa, who's his cousin, they, they kind of grew and developed after I met Riyadh. I think there are several pub, uh, books published now on this theme of, you know, refugees, of fleeing from unsafe places. Um, and why now? People are noticing and seeing it and being moved by it and, it, and trying to connect and understand um, and I also, the other problem that I think maybe is because I don't know what it's like here, but in the UK, for example, the UK has become very divided. You know, so there are many people who are very against migrants and refugees, mm -hmm. uh, very afraid of migrants and refugees coming into the country, and others who embrace it. Mm -hmm. But we're so divided. Yeah. So I think seeing this division as well, I think propels people into wanting to to maybe write something or present something that helps people to be more empathetic. And I think that division maybe has got worse mm. in, the last, in the last few years, especially in the UK. Do you think, I mean, it's for people who, to help them uh, connect, as you say, uh, would, would people feel who actually went through this themselves? That's interesting, because when I just met Mohammed now, the beekeeper, mm -hmm. he said he tried to read the beginning, and it made him so sad because he thought he was the main character. Oh, yes. Yeah, so he said he wants to read it. I don't know how, how he will experience that. Mm -hmm. When I was writing this, I, I was learning Arabic for a year. It's very difficult, like yes. really difficult. Yes. So I was learning at my, my Arabic tutor, Ibrahim. And then I wanted to know what was Syria like before the war and what was his life like and, you know, all of this. And he was telling me this and he said, sometimes I get sad when I talk about this stuff. And I said to me, I said, tell me, tell me, tell me to not ask you, tell me to stop. And he said, if it's too much, I'll tell you. So we had this understanding. 
then I st when I was writing, I started writing, I would read him the manuscript. Mm -hmm. And he was saying to me, please don't stop writing because I feel like I'm there. Oh, yeah. Do you sort of have any writing rituals like, you know, when you want to be alone or with some music? I did when I was in Athens. So I wrote the whole of the Athens part of this novel while I was in Athens. Mm -hmm. I woke up always at the same time. I went down to the same cafe that only sold crepes. Mm -hmm. And I had to sit on the same chair facing the same way. I yes. had to. Yes. 100%. So if somebody came down and took my chair, I was really upset. My chair? Yeah, I would sit on another chair and I'd be like, yeah. oh. and even <laughs> I would just stare at them because I couldn't. I couldn't write facing the other way. You couldn't? No, you I couldn't don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I became really obsessive. I, I don't know. I've never had this before. But when I was in Athens, I became really obsessed with that chair. Yeah. <laughs> and well, before we end then, maybe you can tell us something about maybe will you write another book? I know it's a difficult question, but um, if we were it's talking about this we were talking about this earlier and, and um, some some other author had said when they'd been asked that question that it's like having a baby and someone saying, When are you right when are you making the next baby, oh. <laughs> right? It does That's feel, terrible. yeah, no. <laughs> Look, I, of course, I, I would love to. I'm, I will definitely write again, but I think I need a little bit more time. Yes. You know, because um, I have some ideas in my mind, but because I'm so involved, not just with the story, but with collecting the stories from refugees in Thessaloniki, and you know, and I'm, I've got kind of ongoing work going on with this story. I think I need to. And, you know, visiting different countries and the publicity and this kind of thing. I think I need a little bit of time for my mind to settle before I can yes. really make a decision about what I want to write I'm next. Not, not putting any pressure. No, no <laughs> pressure. <laughs> well, thank you so much for oh, bringing you. this story to the Netherlands. Thank and, you. Um, I hope many people will see how beautiful this book is. Thank you thank very you so much. much. Thank you.